everyone. Very good morning, very good afternoon, and very good evening. Thank you so much for everyone who's here right now, and thank you for attending our session today. A quick introduction about me. My name is Varsha, and I work for Customer Success Team at Decisions. And for today, I'm going to be the presenter of the show. If you have been here with, uh, with one of our webinars previously as well, you might know that uh, in this session, you guys have been uh, kept on mute and you cannot turn on your video. Uh, but in case you have any questions, you can just use our question answer area and you can just post your questions there. By the end of the session, I will take care of all the questions that you have put. That sounds good. Uh, in the meantime, if you want, you can just say hi in the question area as well, and I will receive it that you are right here. If you all are ready, we can get started with today. Today, we're just going to be focusing on how you can use decisions for your executive assistance role. So if you are someone who has joined today's meeting, if you are into an EA or PA role, as well as if you are someone who is here to help your other team members or you are someone who is a director of a company who's organizing meetings and needs someone else help to help you out with the meetings that you're organizer this is the right place to begin with so today we're just going to be focusing on the features that is useful for your particular role we're not going to be going in any other features right now but if you have any other questions about that as well feel free to post in question and answer area my team will look into it and we will get back to you as soon as possible okay so for today Let's get the party started. And when I say party, you can absolutely relax, have a cup of coffee or tea, whatever you like the best. Okay. Have that and just relax. If you want to follow up with me, like while I am working, if you want to see it right through indecision, you can do that. I'm absolutely, I would love that. But if you are someone who feel like that, okay, I cannot do it side by side. It is like too fast for me. It's okay. You can just hear me and look at my face. Uh, and then don't worry about it. All the art, like all the features that we're going to be covering today is available in our knowledge base. So don't worry about noting down or putting down any pointers. Every single topic is available in our knowledge base. So it's going to be very easy peasy for you. Okay. Then let's get started. I'm going to be sharing my team's application on the screen right now to begin with. Super. Okay, so I'm going to keep myself out right now and I'm going to completely focus on the screen sharing that we are doing. This is my team's application and I would really feel really good if there's anyone out there from all the attendees who have joined us today who can just give me in question and answer area that you can see the teams because I want to be super sure that you're looking at the right screen here right now. So anyone out of all the attendees who can just tell me in question and answer, yes, thank you so much. So moving forward, this is an area. So if you are someone who's like, okay, my director or my boss has created this meeting, this meeting invitation has been sent out, and I am responsible for creating all the agendas, do all the work in those meetings, all you have to simply do is just completely come to your team's area and go to your decisions. Now, if you are someone who's completely new to decision, have no idea what you're talking about. So it's very easy. Simply click on these three door buttons in your find an app, simply type decisions and search for the app decisions here and just add it to your team taskbar. A good tip, always pin it. So that is always available in your team taskbar. You do not have to search for it again. So if there's any meeting you have been invited to and you have been given responsible for creating agendas in it, like for example, if there's a board meeting coming up, the invitation has gone out from your company CEO name, but you are responsible for creating all the attendees uh, to make sure that all participants come and all the guest presenters are there and we are creating a beautiful agenda there. You will simply click on decisions and find the right meeting that you're looking for. You can use the filter option here. You can use the search functionality here to write, search for the right meeting that you're looking for. So for example, this is the team meeting that I want to work with. I'm going to simply select on this team meeting here. And I'm going to click on this button called Create Agenda. So you can notice that if a meeting invite has been sent by someone else and in which you are not the organizer, you will notice first that the meeting has not been published. In this case, uh, Mishi is the organizer. Also, if I want to show you quickly here, the system is going to always ask you 
that if you want to create an agenda, you have to request access from that person. Like, hey, could you give me an access to create agenda in those meetings? And I understand that it can be very frustrating to ask an access in every single time you're trying to create a meeting. So decision has a permanent solution for it as well. And this is what we call agenda delicate access. Now I'm gonna be showing you admin portal on the screen right now. So do not worry about it. Some of you might not have access to admin portal, but don't worry, you can ask your IT admin to make these changes for you on your behalf. And it's pretty simple. Whatever the steps you are covering, it's available, like I said, in our knowledge base. So you do not have to just uh, tell everything your IT person, you just share these steps with them and they can do that on your behalf. So it's pretty easy. When you're on your admin portal, go to your agenda delegates area and just tell that, okay, hey, for which person are we seeking access here? So for example, I come up in here and I say that, okay, hey, all the meetings which have been organized by maybe Michaela. I will just see her name. My colleague's name is here, Michaela. I'm going to select her name in here, click on next, and I'm going to put, it's going to ask me, okay, which users who should have access here? There is no limit to the number of users you can give this access to. So if it's like two or three people, they'll like you two or three colleagues who are working simultaneously, you can give them all the access here. So I can come up in here and I can just simply type my name maybe, and I can search for it. Also, if I want to give someone else access as well, I can type my other colleagues name here simply. So I can put their name, I can put their email address and this system will just search for their name. Simply select next and done. The person or your colleague will get the permanent access to create an agenda in all the meetings who's organized by that other person. It's very easy, so don't worry about it. Like I said, a knowledge base, it's written in detail. So if you were not able to follow, it's okay. Also, so these uh, agenda delegates access can be used in two scenarios. One, of course, if the meetings has been sent by someone else and you wanna make sure that you have the access to create agendas in those meetings, that is one. The second important way that you can use is that if unexpectedly someone goes out of office and all the meetings have been organized by that person. You can still come up in here, get the access so that even if the meeting is invite has been sent by someone else or the other colleague, you can still go ahead and create agendas. Okay, very easy peasy. And I'm gonna move forward now. And I just realized that I've used the word easy peasy now like five times, so I'm gonna stop using that, sorry. So, but decision is a simple product, you know, that's why I always love it. But moving forward, so, Everything is good now. You have the access. You can create agendas in the meeting that is organized by someone else. Now the part comes where you will be creating agendas. So if you are someone who's in the webinar who has been using decision for a very long time, you know how to create these agendas and everything. We understand that. But if you are someone who's completely new, I'm just going to still reiterate some words for you that once you select the meeting that you want to work with, system gives you certain options, creating agendas, so just a topic, request topics like you can ask people to submit their topics as well that okay hey if you are about to present something on it and you can use your minor functionality we will talk more about it in detail in the end part of the webinar so when you click on create agenda systems ask you that okay hey do let us know that what's going to be the storage location for this agenda very very important area because system you have to tell the system that okay hey where my meeting contents will be saved so you'll select the t microsoft teams option in here i'm simply going to select next and i'm going to reach my agenda area like i said team today we are completely focused on the feature that is being used for your specific role so there might be several features we are not covering if you still have questions you can pose them and we will reach out to you you reach this beautiful screen where you can start with creating the agenda or if you want to save a lot of your time, if you have a consistent meetings, you can always select a pre template as well to create your meetings and just select the meeting that you want to work with. If I select the template here, system's going to give me a slight preview of how the agenda is going to look like. I can simply hit save and everything that is there on my template will be carried over to my meeting. This just saves a whole lot of my time. I do not have to worry about creating all the agendas every single time. Similar to this is called standing agenda as well. So if you have re meetings, you can use standing agenda. 
But if you have no clue what I'm talking about, we did a webinar last week. If you were there, great. If you're not were there, you can just still send us an email about it and we will share the recording for the standard agenda. Okay. I'm time to time coming on the video and going out. Reason being, whenever I have something to share, I'm just coming out. But when I want you to completely focus on the screen, I'm just taking myself away because I want you to completely focus on the screen. Okay. But if it's irritating, just let me know and I'll stop doing that. Okay. Moving to the agenda here. So you will notice that whenever you're creating an agenda, you have the responsibility that you always you can click on this pencil icon and assign particular presenters that okay, hey, maybe who will be responsible? Maybe I want Jonathan to take care of it. I can just simply hit apply and I can ask him to present this certain topic. We also have an option that you can upload a file in here. So every agenda item has an option in which you can certain upload files that if there's something a presentation, it can be an Excel sheet, it can be a PowerPoint presentation, it can be a Word file as well, and you can just simply save it. Within these agenda items, you also have an option of creating tasks so that you can follow up with your colleagues. You can create certain tasks. So if even if you're while preparing a meeting, you can make sure that you create certain tasks and all these tasks get added to your planner. Also, you can make decisions. But we're not going to go like in depth in here for tasks and decisions. We're going to focus on um, to the upload file right now. So if I have upload a file in here, you have another some options in here called annotate in which you can create your own personal copy of notes with this within this document. So great idea if you have so you want to be prepared for any document that has been attached, you can do that. Also be given an option of restrict access. Now this is something that you might want to use in a lot of your meetings. If it's a board meeting, if it's a project management meeting, and you're like, okay, some of the confidential documents has been uploaded and we don't want other members who's coming to the team to have access to those documents. You can simply click on this restrict access and you can revoke access from your certain members of the team stating that, okay, hey, maybe I don't want Rakesh to have the access to this document or Elizabeth, I can just revoke their access and automatically the document will come up with a lock sign on it. So if you don't have an access to it, you can't access that document. So really important feature if you are looking for a confidential document, you need to upload in certain agenda items. Another important thing that I want you to cover up here is that you might see a scenario in which whenever you're creating those agenda items and you're inviting certain guest presenters, certain are the members who are invited to the entire meeting and they can join your meetings. But it might be a scenario in which a guest presenter is required to enter that meeting, right? In that case, you just want that person to come for that five or 10 minutes. You don't want that person to come to the entire meeting, nor you want to block their calendar for one hour. You just want that person to appear for that maybe in discover objectives for 15 minutes. In that case, it's very simple. And a quick tip is that when you are sending the invite out, never add that person name in your attendee list. When you are creating the agenda, come up in here, click on this pencil icon, go to your presenter icon and just type their email address. So maybe, for example, in my case, I'm just going to try to um, add, Manubhav at the rate meeting decisions.com. I'll just add his email address. This person is not in my team's member. This person is not invited. So automatically this invite button will appear right in front of his name. So I can simply click on this invite button and I can send him the invitation within from this agenda item and the person will become as an external guest. So again, a very beautiful feature that you can use in your meetings to make sure that if there's an external presenter coming up, you do not have to worry about inviting them to the entire meeting. And you can just make sure that the person only receives an invite for that 15 minutes slot. Okay. Also another very important thing that I wanted to show you here is that if you want to create a presentation out of your agendas, you can do that as well. Simply click on this presenter icon and you can create a PowerPoint presentation of the entire agenda, the beautiful agenda that you have been creating. That is one. Also, you have an option of creating a reorder. So if there's any reorder needed, you can do that as well. Another um, one of the important key role that I as an EA or a PA, you might have to see is that if you have been invited to, for example, a board meeting, 
let's take it as a use case that your CEO sends the meeting right out. We all have been invited to that meeting. And now I have been given the responsibility of creating the entire agenda. But I don't want my name to appear anywhere in that meeting because it's a board meeting. There might be a decision or a voting that needs to be take place. I don't want my name to appear in maybe in the minutes as well or in the voting. So in that case, simply go to your team settings in here. And when you go to your member properties, you have an option to mark yourself as not visible. When you mark anyone as not visible, system will automatically will make sure that your name does not appear in your minutes as well as in your voting. So you can still be there, organize everything, make sure everything is intact, but still your name will not appear. Okay, so you can just mark yourself as not visible here. So very beautiful feature that you can highly use in your meetings. Another way is that you can even make sure that who has the voting rights. So if there's a important maybe stakeholder meetings or all hands company meeting is coming up and you can just make sure that all who members should have a voting right or who should not have a voting right or how many number of votes a person should have. You can decide on that as well. So I'm going to simply write out, not save anything and I'm just going to move back to my agenda that I was working on. Everything good still here? Okay. So before I move any forward, uh, the next week we are coming up with a webinar in which we're going to be talking in detail about how you can create your mind notes and how you can create your minutes in Word and OneNote, like in super detail. So make sure you register for those webinars if you want to learn these tricks in detail. In today's meeting, we do going to touch that, but we're not going to go like in detail here. Okay. But before I move to my notes and minutes, uh, I just want to let you know about one more feature here. So if you have been someone who's working on the agendas, you know how hectic this job could be, right? You have to make sure that you cover all the agenda items. You make sure that everything is intact. You might need someone else help here. So in that case, you can simply click on these three lines and go to your manage co-authors. This is literally life saving. So you can ask, you can make someone else as a co-author along with you to help you out with the meetings that you are working with. So when you come up in here, you see a co-author option, simply select search for the name that you're looking for. So maybe I want Rakesh and Rakesh Joshi, I'll just select his name and I will make them a co-author for this meeting. Now, please note that the person will automatically become a co-author for this meeting. But if you want a certain person help or certain colleagues help every single time that you're working upon in your meetings, you can just go ahead and you can make him a permanent co-author as well. You can simply click on in this setting icon in here. You can simply select the permanent option here and you will make the person as permanent co-author. So for this entire team that called welcome to decisions demo team that I have, Rakesh will become a permanent co-author so that he can help me with creating minutes, uh, he can help me with creating agendas, accepting suggestions that we have received, or maybe parking them. And I can just simply hit save here. So I, uh, there are a lot of questions in here, so I will do answer it in the end, but there is one important question that I think I should take. That's uh, even as a delegate, I can still only see meetings and decisions where I'm either organizer or invited to the meeting. Yes. So great question in there. Even if you have been given the delegate access, you have to invite your EA or you have to be invited to that meeting to make sure that it's appear in your decisions. OK, so that's very important. OK, now moving forward, we also give you an option that you can create uh, while you are in your meeting. You can simply click on this my notes icon and you can just create your beautiful notes of the document like off your meeting right there. Now the benefit of the situation is, and I'm gonna come on a video for this because this is something that I still do and I still blame myself for it. How do you take your notes? Because I am still an old school, but I, I hate to do it. And I still like to use one note for it. But I still have this by default, this register and pen in my hand where I just write everything that is going on in a meeting. I know which is a bad habit. We should not do it because the disadvantages of these manual work is that your diaries get lost or your pages get lost. Or if not that, if you write in your sticky notes or your one note, everything gets clustered, right? So 
So that's the benefit of using decisions OneNote here. So whenever you are in your meeting, you have a OneNote option, create your personal notes. The benefit is that automatically decision creates this different agenda items for you. So as you can see here, I can see all my meetings right here. So I can simply switch to any meeting and I can just see that, okay, what were the notes that were created? I can simply select on the agenda item in here to just make my notes very clear that, okay, hey, for which agenda item, which was the discussion that I had. So maybe for welcome and introductions, I said webinar started on time, attendance, and I can just write the attendees who are there and I can just simply save my notes like this. So I can keep, go into each of the particular agenda item and I can simply type the notes that I'm taking in here. Very simple. Now, uh, a cool thing that I want to show you here is that you do not have to worry about saving any of these notes or you do not have to make sure, uh, like click any sync button. Everything that you're doing here is automatically integrated with decision. So if I show you right here, uh, just give me a second. I think there's a slight delay in here. I'm just going to quickly go to my decision here and just simply type my notes. So like I was saying, any notes that you're typing here is getting automatically added to your decisions. So all you have to do is simply go to your decision, find the right meeting that you're looking for, simply type my notes and automatically all your notes get added to your decisions. And as you can see right here, all under your mind meeting round round, you can just see your, all your notes. Simply select in any of the meetings that you're looking for, and you can just simply click on that and you can read your notes that you have been working upon. Sweet. Moving forward in here. Uh, okay, I think look, it looks like it's still sinking in here. But let's just move forward in here. So when you go to your decisions, you will notice that in each of your agenda item already a highlighted option that you will see. It's going to show you that in each agenda item, you have created your personal notes. So and when I say these are your personal notes, it's your, like nobody else can access it, and only you have the access to those notes. The good thing about creating my notes, of course, is that you, when you're creating your minutes as well, automatically these notes are sync in your minutes. So it's pretty simply, you can just select which one you work for. Maybe you want to go with Word or OneNote. You can go by your preference. Like I mentioned before, there's a webinar coming up in detail on how to do these steps. So you can join that webinar to learn more about it. But to give you a preview here, when you open your minutes document in here, Simply System's going to show you the decisions meeting document secretary on your right which is going to give you an option that you can add your personal notes right into the minutes. So you do not have to worry about doing the work all over again or copying or pasting any of your personal notes. You can just simply from here select the notes that you want to work upon and just simply merge that. And all your notes that was there in decisions will be carried over to your minutes document. Uh, of course, within the minutes as well, you can do a lot by sending it for review to your uh, director or your boss just for sure that okay they can review it before sending it out also you can finalize it from right here within this document but uh, I'm going to minimize it for now not going to go in like super depth because we have other webinar for it but today just focusing on your role and helping you out in here this is like a very cool feature that can really help you in eliminating a lot of your waste time and you can really get in these things done super fast Another quick tip that I want to show you here is that while you are in a meeting, you do not have to wait till go to your minutes to take an attendance. While you're in a meeting, simply click on this title icon, click on this pencil icon that you have, and you can simply mark anyone up while you are in a meeting as well. So do not have to worry about waiting for the minutes or writing somewhere down. You can just simply come to the minute and mark anyone absent who is not there in the meeting, and you can simply hit apply. Same attendance that you've been taking, when you were going to create your minutes, the same information will be carried over there as well. So super cool. Another cool thing is that you can use your custom tiles here. So if there's any particular link or if there's any uh, special SharePoint area or a dashboard that you want your attendees who are coming to the meeting to go to, you can simply click on this tile icon in here. You can select your favorite color that you want to work upon and you can add a link right here. 
So that's going to become a custom tile for the entire team that you have. So for example, I say that we have a customers dashboard. If I have any customer dashboard, I can select my favorite color. I have a folder option or a link option. I can just put up a link. Uh, right here, I'm just going to add any random link and I'm going to be say just to show it to you how it appears. The custom link will always be available like a tile in all your meetings that is scheduled for this particular team. So really handy. You do not have to worry about sharing this link every single time to all the attendees. Anyone who has the access to decision or have been invited, they can see the style and they can work upon. Okay? And after the meeting, you can always share the request feedback. So when you are creating this meeting, you can just make sure that everyone who's there in the meeting, they can just simply click on this request feedback and you can ask for their feedback. Okay, how was the meeting? Were you able to follow or if there's any questions about it? You would notice that this is something that's going to come up your way a lot of your time when you're creating these meetings is if you're inviting someone and an ex guest, external guest to your meetings, manage access will be your lifesaver. So if there's any guest attendees coming to your meeting, system by default do not give them any access to your agenda as a safety reasons and as a precautionary reasons. Then you can come up in here and make sure that your guest attendees get a level of access. So you can just see here that, okay, hey, which level of access I want to give Kevin and Ashley, my friends in here. I can just go ahead and I can say that, okay, hey, Ashley, you can have all the edit rights. So I can simply click edit and I can give her all the edit rights. So if she's a participant coming to the meeting, make sure that we can edit the agendas and work with them. But if I want Kevin to not do that, I can just simply give him a view access or I can completely st stop sharing. So I can just make sure that he doesn't have access to it. But having said that, this is slightly different from your guest presenter. If there's a guest presenter invited to a particular agenda item, this person does not have an access to any of the meetings, any of the agendas items, and the person only have access to this particular item. Okay. Super. Uh, to, uh, there is just one more question that I want to take from the question area, which seems very important. The, um, you want to know how tasks can be created, though we have different webinar for it, but we still have like two minutes. I would just like to take care of that. You can create tasks while you are in any of your agenda items. So, for example, in welcome and introduction, simply hover over it, click on this task icon, and you can just create a task. Like, for example, I want to say that, okay, hey, uh, please upload presentation for agenda item uh, one. And I can just write a description about it, what this task is all about, select the agenda item it is about, give it a time till when you want it to be due, assign it to a person you want to and simply click on this add button. Very easy and the task will be created. All the tasks that you're creating is also getting added to your Microsoft Planner. So you can always go in there and you can always search for all the tasks that you have created. So you do not have to worry about it. It works in the thing. So automatically for every single meeting, inside your planner, a new bucket will be created in which you can see it in detail that, okay, what's the status of my task? What's happening to those tasks here? So I'm going to take a pause in here and just let you know, guys, that these are all the so cool features that you can highly use in your meetings. Please make sure that you utilize them. These are like very small, small features that are available in decisions that you might not have ever seen it, but really can help you with your meetings. And just like an example, is it's called these hashtags. You might not know how these work, or some of you might be super experts and they already know about it all. But I just still want to show you that how you can use these hashtags to really as a lifesaver for you. So if you are creating these agenda items and you have for a particular meetings like board meetings or project meetings, if I say that okay, here for decisions overview, I want to make sure and give it a hashtag. Uh, next steps maybe okay, I give it a next step hashtag in here. Hashtag in decisions work exactly like hashtag works in your social media. Super cool. Like in social media. To segregate your post from another person's post, you put hashtags there. That, okay, hey, my hashtag is maybe related to education, customer, meetings. In a similar way, you can divide your agendas on the basis of hashtag that we are providing. So when you are down the line, you have created a lot of your meetings. When you click on this search button and I put that hashtag, maybe I want to say, okay, all this uh, 
agenda items that I've created for hashtag next steps and I click on search, system's gonna show me all the agenda items right away. So it's gonna really filter out a lot of items for me and I do not have to worry about going it in detail. Very cool, okay? Uh, in a similar line, so we also have a very beautiful feature called Meeting Book. It is a uh, compilation of all your agenda items and your attachments in one document. But again, uh, Meeting Book and Minutes of the Meeting will be covered in detail next Wednesday at the same time. Please do make sure that you come up here. If you can, if you cannot, you still you can register for it because we will be sharing recording with you and you can just see that how you can create your Meeting Book and Minutes in detail. Because today's webinar was just for 30 minutes. I don't want to take any longer time. I know you still have other commitments. So thank you so much for joining this webinar. All your questions are with me. The questions that I was not able to answer, I will personally reach out to you to help you out with them. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming in good attendance. And I hope these feature were helpful for you. Thank you, guys. Have a great day ahead. And I see you in other webinars.